Good morning, Dr. Manakshi, and welcome to Sairio. Sairio is an initiative to engage uh, academia, the healthcare sector, the industry, and the policy makers to actively communicate science to the common public. Um, could you please introduce uh, yourself to our audience? Yes, good morning. I'm Minakshi Bhatt. I'm a doctor, and I work as a clinical geneticist at the Center for Human Genetics, Bangalore. Yes. Um, so, what in your understanding is newborn screening and could you give us a brief idea about how newborn screening, screening came about to be in India? Um, newborn screening involves testing all children uh, shortly after birth, usually within the first few days, for a set of diseases which, if not picked up in the newborn period, may lead to serious problems later on, medically and intellectually. So, um, this usually in our understanding is a blood test which identifies metabolic disorders which appear very early in life, but it also involves other tests such as hearing tests for very early onset hearing loss and sometimes for congenital heart disease for serious heart defects. Um, well, about India, I think uh, the journey has been quite long. Uh, newborn screening worldwide started about 50, 55 years ago. We have been quite late in uh, adopting some of these techniques. So what happened around uh, 20 years back was the Indian Council of Medical Research thought it appropriate to do a pilot project. And the diseases that were identified were those diseases which had treatment, uh, which was relatively uh, easy to access. So the two diseases that were picked at that point was congenital adrenal hyperplasia, for short known as CAH, and congenital hypothyroidism. Both of these uh, diseases cause serious problems to the individual that's affected and has effective treatment. So they tested 100,000 children from five centers and the results of these tests uh, made people recommend uh, these, that newborn screening should be available throughout the country. Unfortunately, till today, newborn screening is available only in some uh, states and there also through some hospitals. So it's not universally present. Could you tell us about a little more about the present scenario? Like, are there any uh, states in specific, the governments making an effort uh, to bringing about newborn screening uh, in a uniform way to the people of that state? Uh, since health uh, is designated as a state subject, most states have taken the initiative about what they want to uh, include for testing. This is universal, even in other countries, uh, what diseases need to be covered is decided by individual states. But um, the states that have done well uh, are Goa, which started a newborn screening pro program initially, uh, way ahead of others. And then it was discontinued for various reasons, but is likely to restart. The state of Kerala has also initiated all government hospitals to start newborn screening. And this has been going on for approximately a year. The third place that has started newborn screening and which is working well is the Delhi Union State, where they're covering uh, between Delhi and surrounding Haryana uh, a number of children for newborn screening, which is comprehensive. So how do you see it? Do you think newborn screening should be implemented by the state government or the central government? So now uh, the central government, uh, as a part of Ayushman Bharat, has uh, also incorporated newborn screening, but uh, the events haven't still taken off very well yet. So how do you see that? I think that uh, for anything to be effective, it has to be a national program. So most other health-related national programs have got a central directive and a state execution. And I think that would be the best way for uh, a newborn screening program to go forward on a mode that is equivalent to the universal immunization program. 
Okay. So, but how do you account for the diversity of uh, the nation in terms of, um, let's say, availability of resources, the genetic diversity, and um, also how uh, things work pretty smoothly in some states but not so well in the others? Well, that's a very important question and a very difficult question to answer comprehensively in a few seconds to minutes. But the thing is that uh, unless we make a start and unless we start um, the program, perhaps with a few diseases that are of national priority, we could include the two diseases and maybe a couple more. Um, the genetic and uh, population diversity throughout the country and the access to people is always going to be difficult. But unless we make a start, we are not going to succeed. Um, we've also in the past spoken about uh, the infant mortality rate. Whenever countries are improving their infant mortality rate, and once it goes below 40 per thousand to 30 per thousand, these diseases take a priority. So we need to identify them early to reduce the mortality and morbidity. Uh, can you tell us how the component of genetic counseling, counseling fits in? Um, in an ideal world, I think families need to be counseled, uh, probably in pregnancy, but certainly before the baby is tested. So testing is usually done before the baby is discharged from hospital. Uh, within the first few days of life. Now, this is very difficult in our country because even today, only about 60 to 65% of babies are delivered in a hospital setting. But families need to understand what their children are being tested for, when the results are likely to come out, and what to do next in case of confirmation or treatment. Yeah. So can you tell us how parents can go about the entire process of newborn screening and further care if they are diagnosed? So in private hospitals, these tests are offered to most of the families and in some government hospitals this is coming up. But if a family has understood or wishes to have their child tested, they need to request their pediatrician or neonatologist uh, as soon as the ch child is born. Uh, on day two or three of life, when the baby starts feeding, uh, the tests are usually done by taking a few drops of blood, either from the heel or from a fingertip, onto a blotting paper, which, which is then dried in air, and this is called a dry blood spot. And these dried drops of blood are then used for testing after they go to the laboratory. Ideally, they should take 24 to 48 hours to get back the first screening result. Can you tell us about um, how parents can go about um, a diagnosis after newborn screening for their child? So, since newborn screening covers all children, ideally, uh, the results usually come back as a definitive uh, no, nothing is wrong with the child, or possibly something is not right about the test. So it's either marked as a failed test or alert for another test. So since this is a screening test and not a diagnostic test, uh, the doctor who is in charge of the baby's care calls back the parents and repeats the test or does a confirmatory test. The confirmatory test may be a genetic test or another biochemical or metabolic test. Once this test comes back positive again, uh, we would know that the child would require treatment for that particular disease and the parents would need to be counseled either at the primary center or in a specialist center. The exception to this is if there is a suspicion of congenital hypothyroidism. As soon as a screen test comes as failed or alerted, it's uh, mandated that the child is started on uh, thyroid supplements and then confirmation is done so that no time is wasted. So the set of tests that are being done in, in newborn screening, so um, how do you account for, account for those tests? Say, um, are these tests only diagnostic or are they treatable and manageable as well? The, because it's called newborn screening, 
they are still screening tests and not diagnostic tests. Diagnostic tests are more expensive and limited to the few people that come back failed for a test. It is important to remember that everybody that fails the initial screen is not likely to be affected. There are other reasons why it may come as a fail the first time. And only a small fraction of those individuals will actually have a disease that needs to be uh, treated. But you do need a specific diagnostic test, and these are usually done in specialized centers more centrally. Okay. So when um, someone is positive, even at this level of a diagnostic test, so are these uh, diseases uh, treatable? So the since we are not, we don't have a universal program in place, I think this is more of a theoretical question. But most countries choose those diseases that have a specialized, specific treatment which stops the progress of the disease and stops the harmful effects of an untreated disease. So we have to be careful about starting treatment as early as possible in children that are diagnosed positive. Uh, can you give us an example of a disease that can be treated? Yes, I think the easiest example is what was this used in the screening uh, protocol by ICMR, and that is congenital hypothyroidism. For a child that tests positive for congenital hypothyroidism, the cost per day of replacing oral thyroid uh, medication is less than 50 paisa per day. But it ensures that the child's uh, intellectual capacity and growth is maintained uh, well if we pick it up in an ideal phase. The more difficult diseases are like metabolic disorders called phenylketonuria or PKU for short. In this condition, a single amino acid is not being metabolized. This is a unit which uh, makes a protein. And uh, the side effects of the disease involve losing intellectual capacity and the child getting fits. There is a diet, effective diet, which excludes this particular amino acid and if it is started early enough in the child, there should be normal growth and normal development. Do you think hospitals and doctors become pivotal to encourage newborn screening or is there another way to reach people effectively? Uh, I think... Um, in cities and in urban areas, hospitals and doctors are the pivotal, areas, pivotal people that will be important in uh, reaching out to families and individuals. In more rural areas, we've noticed that there aren't uh, many hospitals, but there are health workers like the ASHA workers. And there are programs that have been running successfully with the interventions of ASHA workers. So at district hospitals, PHCs and uh, smaller units than that, we will need to require the health and services of the ASHA workers and other health workers. Do you have anything more to add to whatever we have already discussed? I think um, if I had to say one thing, I think for our country to go forward, this is probably the most important single public health measure that we need to introduce, although late, into our health system to avoid much more incidence of these births that can easily be treated. That's all. Thank you so much for your time. It has been a pleasure. Thank you.